So now specifically, we're going to be talking about the standard normal distribution. So we know about a normal distribution, but the standard normal has a couple specific attributes. The first attribute is that it's a symmetric bell-shaped curve. So you know we've got our curve with our three standard deviations above and below the mean. Um, the second attribute is the curve is centered over the mean mu, but that's both of these items have been true of all normal curves. But what's specific to the standard normal curve is that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one every single time. It's always going to be zero and one. There's no exceptions. So that means our curve can be drawn from zero to positive three on the right and negative three on the left every single time. You might have heard the phrase six sigma sometimes. It's a business phrase and that's what they're referring to from negative three up to positive three is six sigmas, six standard deviations. The next thing to talk about is specifically a z-score. And if you remember, a z-score measures the number of standard deviations a value is away from the mean. So we're measuring those three up and three down. And if you remember the formula for a z-score, z equals x minus mu over sigma. So what we're saying here is we take whatever the thing we're measuring is, we find out how far away it is from the mean, but we need to divide by sigma, by the standard deviation, so that we're talking increments of sigma, of standard deviations. This means, from there, we'll be finding the probability of an outcome being between certain z-scores, or to restate that in other words, the probability of an outcome being between a range of standard deviations. If you remember from before, we would never find the probability of somebody's birthday being exactly today because that's too specific. Never the probability of an exact outcome. It has to be a range. So if we really want somebody whose birthday is today, the way that we use a normal curve is we would say, you know, from 12 a.m. this morning to 11.59 p.m. tonight, and that would be our range. So if we want to find probability, it turns out that's going to be the exact same thing as finding area. We've kind of already discussed that. Now there's two ways to do it. Well, I guess there's three. There's this crazy formula that you could plug your range, you know, somebody being born from 12 a.m. this morning to 11.59 p.m. tonight, into this crazy formula. There's calculus, but basically what we're going to end up doing is using this table where someone's really found every scenario possible and put it into the table. And that's what we're going to use. Now, if you go search the internet, there's multiple ways, there's multiple uh, standard normal tables out there. We're going to focus on the one where it's finding the area or probability to the left. So that's the important part. It's to the left of a particular z-score. And so I give a little bit of an example here where if we wanted the area or probability of somebody being below one standard deviation, we would have used the table to find the answer is there's a 15.9, if I was to convert that to percents, chance of somebody being below one standard deviation. Um, and then I kind of drew the corresponding picture to go along with it. Now, obviously, if we want somebody who's born today, we don't want somebody who's just born before 11.59 p.m. tonight. We want, you know, a specific range, and we'll talk about how to manipulate the table. I tried to give you a little snapshot here of the table that I'm going to be using. But basically what we'll do is we'll always take the standard normal table, because in statistics there's lots of tables, so be sure you're starting with the correct table. Then for us, those z-scores are going to run along the left and top border. So down the left and across the top is our z-score broken into parts, remember, which is increments of standard deviations. And then in the middle of the table would be that area or probability. So all these four-digit numbers that we'll see once we get into the table will be giving us the area and or probability.